so we are back with the 97 uh, R 1100 RT and uh, today's gonna be the moment of truth I've had the battery on the tender uh, for a couple hours now I haven't done it I was gonna do it overnight but um, I didn't have the time I just forgot to plug it in but um, it's been tending for a little bit now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump it again because the battery um, is reading that has a lot higher volts so uh, let's go ahead and see if this will start up I already got the terminals hooked up don't have them screwed in, but I want it to be that if I'm just jumping it, I don't even know if it works yet. So. Neutral. No problems with this. Like a champ. <laughs> and, all right, where is it? So what went down? Uh, just no spark. I don't think. No, no well, dude, the gas isn't flowing. So it's gas? And that's what it sounded like, Spencer. Yeah. Like gas is not. What, ha what happened? It just quit? Yeah, it just went and started. Like it stopped. And put it down. Nothing flowing. Well, it was weird it was it wasn't flowing until you started it. I feel like last time. Uh, Should I get rid of the filter? Oh. See, I see it has no, like, air or, like, you know what I mean? Make push sure. it again. Push it again. See how gas is coming out? Well, yeah. gas is leaking. Well, yeah, it's because I pushed it. And so is it a clog? I think it's a clog in the filter. Or in the car. With the carb, it should flow here through here fine. Yep, yep, fine. I think the carb might be clogged again. You just did that and it was flowing fine? Yeah. So, just a shit carb. Is that what it is? I mean, we'll clean it again. We didn't use any carb cleaner last time. That's true. But it wasn't even that. It was just the, that was the, the float was Well, I, I, I think you should have drenched that bitch in carb cleaner. Yeah. That's exactly what my grandpa told me to do when I clean my carb. Yeah. It just makes everything run smoother. Yeah. I got shop towels too, so you can clean it out pretty good. I say we take the whole car out and clean it, make it a nice clean. Let's do that. Let me try one more time. Oh, he says running kind of there's one way to tell if there's no spark. You pull the spark plug out and try and do that. It's same deal as the old bike. You think? I think it's yeah, gas. Dude, it, was, it was the same thing as Okay, and you said it was running kind of weird, right? Or it, was, it was running a little strange. That's when the car was out. Yeah. Alright, well, let's, let's it see if it's the float again. Huh? We'll see if it's the float again. Running smooth. Seems like it's idling pretty steady. I still need to check all the fluids and everything and kind of go through it, but looks like it's running smooth now. And definitely because I can hear it struggling in here. These are the hatters. So, one extra part. Um, didn't really anticipate. I mean, I, I guess I really thought about it. That might need that, but um, seems to be idling smooth. So I guess everything mechanically is pretty strong with the bike. Um, knock on wood, but seems pretty strong. I'm gonna get some parts ordered, and hopefully um, the next time I'm doing an update on this, we're actually putting it together and uh, getting her on the road to see if the transmission and everything works. So it's still, you know, a uh, laundry list of shit that. Um, I might have to figure out, but as for right now, be strong. Hey, yeah. Do it like you are. So what you guys do? You carve it down? No, well, I just open it to see if the floats were working and they're working. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I can take it out later and clean it. I just wanted to try to fix what's, figure out what's going on. Was it idling when it quit or what were you running when it quit? I know, I, well, I, it was idling and then I shut it off and then when I went to go start it up again. Nothing. That's awkward or error. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> Probably. It's possible the plug's got something on it. I don't know whether I got my plug wrench with me or not. I can take a look. Yeah, let me get this. Oh, I'll take some of those lights. I'd be ugly. Absolutely stuck. That's a cool tool. Oh, 
since you just ripped your exhaust off. Yeah, why not? Make it really quiet. Make it really quiet. How loud would that be? Just straight bored out of it. Right out of that there. That would be insanely loud. Yeah. This is not that loud. Yeah, it's not. Not. Warm. Well, the engine's not hot, so it should come out of there. You really shouldn't take a spark plug out of the hot engine. Do it until it cools down. But it's cool. Yeah. Well, it was under tight anyway. Yeah. What happened if I drank this? You had to get your stomach pumped. Nah, you'd be fine. You piss flames. There's rust, gas, and oil. How bad is it to drink gasoline, Grandpa? Are you talking to me? <laughs> that looks like hex. Yeah, that ain't good. It's black. Ooh. It should be nice and almost grayish. Awesome. All right, I'm going to run to AutoZone then and get one. But by gosh, you can't put much of a battery in here. That's what I'm saying. So, I don't know. 124,000 miles. <laughs> Not bad. You search it online, I guess. What does actually hit? It obviously doesn't need the battery to run. It'd be ran pretty good for her. So, yeah, she runs pretty good. Kind of like your other bike. We got a hell of a garage now. Uh, yeah. You know what happened last time? Smoke. So, last update before I kind of wrap up the video. The forks are out. This is how bad they were. Obviously, I showed you before where those snapped on the actual wheel, but those are awful. Um, forks are repaired, or not repaired, but they're removed. I pulled them out. I got the handlebars disassembled and everything. Um, right here, I got one sitting on the side. Those are all the bolts for it. So, there's two bushings on either side, which I think got slightly damaged i might replace this whole assembly it depends on what it actually comes with but took the uh other side of this the trailing arm because obviously this is really shot so i took the other side of the trailing arm off it's just a big ass allen key like this whole bike is just taken apart by allen keys pretty much but so trailing arm obviously the headers need to be replaced um luckily it's not welded because i would just cut it but on the other side, there's a release here. So I've been trying to break that bolt. I actually destroyed one of my sockets here. I don't even know where I put it. But, oh, here she is. Destroyed the threadings because I was trying to kind of um, have the bolt on there tight, but not the socket because it's a long and I didn't have an extension. So trying to get that. I need to change the oil and do the fluids on it just because now I know it's running. So I want to keep it running smooth. And uh, pair up this video up. I'm gonna go upstairs, order all the parts, and um, should be good to go. Next update video should be, you know, trying to get this thing to run and drive. So it runs, but driving's a whole another story. That could be transmission or <laughs> that could be anything. So you get the assembly, get the wheel, get the forks, control arm or the uh, trailing arm, and. Um, Hopefully everything's gonna go together smooth. So I will see you guys when I'm buying the parts. Okay, so we are looking at the parts. I've already been searching around for quite a bit. I don't know how well you can actually see this, but um, basically uh, I haven't totaled everything up right now. I actually found, so I need, like I said, the headers, which $38, really cheap. I had to search for a while to get these because some of them uh, are a little pricey, but found two picks so this one obviously is a little more right around 66 bucks 
after shipping, but 30 bucks, I forget it's the price to ship it. So I'm probably not even gonna make an offer on this guy. I am gonna try and haggle uh, a lot of these, but uh, headers, I'm just gonna buy straight up. Uh, the front fork assembly, so this comes with the mounting bracket, which is a big deal. A lot of the ones that actually have the mounting bracket are going for somewhere in the range of 200 bucks, but this guy's got him for $70. Got almost the same miles on the bike as mine does. So I'm gonna see if I can haggle this a little bit, if I can work them down a little bit. If not, I mean, that's still a pretty good price. Looks like it's gonna be 83 bucks uh, with shipping, but this is coming from Florida, so I would get it very fast. And the last part, which is gonna be the most expensive thing to actually get this bike driving and actually running, um, is the wheel. Now, this is the only one that I've actually seen with two rotor assemblies. The guy told me that he was going to uh, have both the actual uh, rotors for me, but I, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I can't rely on this guy uh, entirely. Um, so that's one of the most expensive pieces, obviously the wheel with the rim. Um, I don't think I'm really overpaying for it. I know motorcycle tires are pretty cheap, but it's what? So it's got the tire, the rim, two rotor assembly, which each rotor is roughly a hundred bucks because they're the Brembo rotors or whatever they actually originally put on it. It has the mounting bolts and everything, which I don't really need because I can take that and salvage it from the, um, probably the only thing I can take off that front bike or of the uh, other wheel, the wrecked wheel. So. I'm gonna see what I can take off that. I'm definitely taking off the calipers. That was another 350 bucks that I didn't want to spend on this bike. So everything's coming out pretty, pretty good. I'm gonna see if I can haggle this guy a little bit. Maybe get that wheel for 150 bucks or so. I'm trying to keep the grand total of this bike somewhere in the range from 600 to 800 for running and driving 1100cc BMW motorcycle. That doesn't sound that bad. So um, this is obviously a shorter video. I'm going to order all these parts. Uh, we're doing some stuff with the uh, MT250, so we're going to be um, wiring in taillights, headlights. We just got a battery and everything, so we're going to try and wire that up and make that bike somewhat of an enduro, kind of street legal, maybe just make it look a little better. You put mirrors on and stuff. I know we had a problem with the carb today and put a new spark plug in because the old one looked awful. So that's it for today. We got the bike running, so I'm super excited. Uh, I was really thinking about parting out the bike. I was really kind of pissed off that it wasn't starting, but it was really just a dead battery. Literally, like, as soon as I got it to a good enough level, like, uh, my grandpa was saying he, he had a gyrocopter, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like a bodiless helicopter, and uh, at certain voltages, the, it would not even start because, obviously, well, you're dealing with aircraft, so you want everything to work. Like, that's what I was saying, you know, for cars and stuff, it doesn't really matter because you're on the ground, so, you know. But I'm really excited the bike started. It started right up right when I got the battery charged and then jumped it. So the battery still needs a new battery. It's not actually starting on its own power right now. Even with the jumpers, I was just out there trying to start it to um, show it to a friend and it uh, wasn't starting up. So it definitely needs a new battery. I'm gonna factor that into my costs, but I'm looking at relatively somewhere in the range of 200 to 350 on the high end in parts. Obviously paying 350 for the bike and that will put me right at around 700 bucks. So that's not bad. I'm going to keep you guys updated and I will see you guys in episode four. Thank you for watching. Peace.